Hi, Angie Taylor here, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can use textures to fill your text using clipping paths in Photoshop. Now, I've downloaded this texture here from Sirius on DeviantArt, and if you want to check out Sirius's work, you can have a look at deviantart.com and have a look at some of his really nice textures. And I really recommend joining DeviantArt. It's got some great artwork on there that you can use. So what I'm going to do is in Photoshop, I've opened up the texture and I've also opened up right on Brighton 2011 end PSD. And what I want to do is have them open side by side. So I'm going to, I'm in application frame mode, by the way. So if you're not, just make sure you're in application frame mode in the window menu. And then that enables you to choose different layouts. So I'm going to choose this one that's going to tile my images side by side. And what I then want to do is with the selection tool selected, I'm just going to drag this image over onto this image. And if I hold down shift as I'm doing that, it's going to center it on this image. That image now becomes active, so I can now go to single view. And you'll see that my texture is now above my text layers. Now I'm going to switch off this top text layer. And on this layer, what I want to do is switch off my effects for now. So I can only see the text itself. And then what we're going to do is just close up the effects so we can't see them. So I'm going to drag this layer down on top of my text layer. So it's just above the text layer. And then to create a clipping mask to fill the text with this texture, all I need to do is hold down the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac, Alt key on Windows. And I get this little indicator telling me that if I click now, I'm going to create what's called a clipping path. And a clipping path, you can also apply that just by selecting the layer and choosing uh, Make Clipping Path or Release Clipping Path in this menu here. So Create Clipping Mask. So it used to be called Clipping Path. It's now called Clipping Mask. So what we can do now is a couple of things. We can move the text if we select the text layer and select the Move tool by hitting V on the keyboard. And moving that, you'll see that we move the text. And notice that the text is moving above the texture. Okay, or we can select the texture and move that. And notice that it moves the texture within the text. So if we want to get more of that C texture, we can move it up until it's in the correct position. If we want to move them both, we can select them both and move them as a group. Or you could select them and make them into a layer group. So say new group from layers. And we'll call that clipping mask text group. And that makes it easy for us to move that as a single object or get access to the objects within. Now, the other thing that I want to do is adjust the color of that. So I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and I'm going to choose vibrance. Now, if I was to add Vibrance without putting this option on, it would affect all of the layers underneath it. But if I say use previous layer to create clipping mask, it will automatically clip this adjustment layer to the layer underneath it. And that means when I adjust the Vibrance setting, notice, and also the saturation I'll put up a little bit, notice it's only affecting the text. It's not affecting any of the other layers. We can also maybe add levels change, for example. OK, and again, that's going to affect all of the layers. But if I make it into a clipping mask, it will only affect the right on Brighton text. OK, so clipping masks allow you to determine which layers are affected and filled by textures and effects. Now, if I want to edit the vibrance effect, I can just double click this icon here and that will open up the vibrance effect, so I could bring the vibrance and the saturation down a little bit as well. Now, once I have the texture in there, I may want to add my effects back on. To do so, I need to click here just to switch the eyeball back on. Now, I don't want the gradient overlay anymore because I'm going to use the texture that's inside there. I don't really want the stroke, or I do want the stroke, but I'm going to edit it. So we're going to keep the bevel and emboss. We're going to switch off the inner glow as well. And we're going to go into the stroke settings and just make some changes to the stroke. At the moment, it's using a gradient. We could stick with a gradient if we want to have it fade on. Notice that the gradient that I had, if we just cancel that, 
The gradient that I had in there for the stroke is this uh, shape burst gradient, which gives us black, red, black, which gives us kind of layers of strokes. So we have inner and outer strokes. But you can change that. You can change it to any of these gradients that you want. Or, in fact, you could say just make it a solid colour. And we could just choose maybe dark aqua kind of colour for our stroke. I'm also going to reduce the size of the stroke, bring it down to a value of maybe about three, two or three, something like that. OK, so you can see that by playing around with textures, and I can still adjust the texture if I want to move it a little bit inside the text, get some more of the sea foam kind of effect that I can. I can adjust that texture any way I want. So if you can't find the textures you want in the effects, then you can load your own textures and use clipping paths. Incidentally, you can, in the gradient overlay dialog box, add textures to the gradient by choosing something like the pattern overlay. So if you've loaded a pattern in, you can actually apply it to the text this way as well. So one way of doing it would be to open up, say, nature patterns, and then choose one of the nature patterns and apply it as a gradient in that way. So if we wanted grass instead of sea, we can use some of the built-in pattern overlays within the layer styles as well. So a couple of ways of applying textures to your text. I'm going to just undo that so that we get back to our sea foam. So there we go, clipping paths in Photoshop.